Shalom, we praise it to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahshai, Ba'ashem, Ha'arakach, Kodash. Double honors unto the apostles and elders of great Milsa and all well. And Shalom to the whole four like this is by Allah. And um, the title of the video is called Crept in Unawares. Dealing with the recent um, um, video done by the elder Manazak of, out of um, South Carolina. Um, pinpointing an individual that um, was greatly suspicious, right, and doing things that are not that that are far not in line with the spirit of Yahweh Bar Shem Yahweh Shai Bar Shem Kudash. More in line with the spirit of you know the the. Um, the zealots and things of that nature that don't that don't, that don't pertain to the prophetic prophetic words of the scriptures, all right. We've been blessed with the gift of faith, for the grace and mercy of Yahweh Bar Hashem El Shai Bar Hashem Al Rokar Kudash, and in having that, we've been given a uh, um, a spiritual artillery, all right, and this speaks to many you know or many really you know we've been out on our starting with the apostles all right on down and their elders and their teachers before them all right they've been out on our ways and byways teaching this truth now in reality you can just say we're men in dresses that scream you know out on our ways and byways believe all that bible madness and make a joke and a song and dance out of it, a joke and laugh, and just say, yeah, man, it's some idiocracy, all right? But it really kind of shows the potency of the spirit in that what's being stirred up against us in in hopes of um, bringing it to naught is really showing you how powerful this the spirit of Yahweh, Ba'ashem El Shai, Ba'ashem HaRakal Kodash is, because it's a spiritual power that's bringing down you know break it break down strongholds and bringing the minds of people into um into um i forget how it's phrased in corinthians but um subject to you know the spirit of yahweh Shai, yahweh Bashem, El Shai, Bashem, El Rakal, Kodash. all right so ultimately what's being shown is that look you know the power of the Heavenly Father is a spiritual power, all right? And we don't have to delve into any form of carnality because the spirit that we possess is rooted in prophecy. And this is going to happen whether you like it or not. Now, if you really, you know, don't believe that, then it's best, you know, you just go about your day and ignore us. But the fact that there's, you know, things being done really shows, speaks to how powerful this word is. Now, what I want to build upon due, due to these things happening, these are prophetic events that have to unfold, you know, expressly in accordance with the, the testimony of Abba Shai. And not only is going to, you know, befall on whoever it's allotted to, to, you know, do certain things that's, that I'm going to delve into that's being expressed, all right, whether it be, you know, you know, being crept in unawares, you know, these spies, these demons, all right? But then ultimately, with, on, a, on the right hand side, the righteousness in that the men of the Lord, the prophets, are only going to fulfill their their namesake in that they're going to prophesy before great councils and, and great men of this world to condemn them and cut them in the spirit, all right? As our forefathers did in the time of old. But in this time that we're living in is a time of judgment where only that judgment is going to unfold and unravel and it's going to have Esau's kingdom all right loose at the seams so let's get into I've got a couple precepts and I'm just going to get to the point and Lord will he be edified so it's second second Peter 2 and 1 but there were false prophets also among the people even as there shall be false teachers among you yeah, there's, you know, there's false prophets before and there's false teachers today, all right? That's the balance. That is how it has to be. 
In order for you to have the righteous prophets, you have to have, for every one, you got to have X amount, all right? Because righteousness is few and f- few, and especially in the days that we live in now, is few and far between. There's you're barely gonna you're gonna be hard pressed to find righteous individuals out here in this world, all right? Who privily shall bring in damnable um, heresies, even denying the Lord that brought them, brought them, and bring upon themselves swift de- swift destruction. Right, plain as that. You have people that are gonna deny this this gospel and basically bring about what swift destruction. Verse two, and many shall follow their pernicious ways, destructive ways. That's another way. Uh, that's a, that's another way of um, of saying. That's also ultimately what pernicious means. All right, by reason of whom the. By reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. Excuse me. Damn, man. Read that again. And many shall follow their pernicious ways by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. And through covetousness shall they be, shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and a damnation slumbereth not. For if the Most High spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell, all right, hell being the angels that sinned are basically the Israelites that walk upon the earth, that get put in bodies, all right, to live in these chains of darkness, all right. That's why it talks about cast to hell because it's living in the conditions that we're presently in on earth. We're in hell. And delivered them into chains of darkness, your body, to be reserved unto judgment. All right? So there's key, there's specific people that have, they have they're allotted that. And spared not the old world, but saved Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the earth of the ungodly. All right, bringing in the flood of the ungodly, and that's what happened in the time of old, and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemning them with an overthrow, making them an example, an example, all right, unto those that after should live ungodly. So we have these events that unfolded before. The first one that was spoke of being that of the first death, right, when the Heavenly Father flooded the whole earth, which was you know, um, right after you had Enoch getting taken up into the chariot. But then also, what did you have after that? You had, you know, Lot in Sodom and Gomorrah, who basically got, you know, delivered from there. But he was vexed for the... Uh, I'm reading the next words. Vexed with the cult, com- filthy conversation of the wicked. But basically, that was condemned by fire and brimstone, which, funnily enough, those two examples speak to the time that we're in, all right, because the flood came, why? Because evil was so great upon the earth and the Heavenly Father wanted to cleanse it by way of one of two cleansing agents being water, all right? But in Sodom and Gomorrah, another wicked place, the Heavenly Father wanted to cleanse that land of those people by way of doing what? By way of fire, all right, which will cleanse the earth. So this time that we're in is basically the second, coming up to the second death, Speaking of the judgment of America, where it will become the lake of fire. All right. Verse 7. And delivered just Lot vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. For the righteous man dwelling among them. In seeing and hearing vex his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. All right. So he was vexed day to day with their unrighteous and unlawful deeds. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the good godly out of temptations and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. And that's only where it is. Alright, so all these things are not being done in vain. So I want to progress into this example for it to be shown. Because right now we have a spiritual gift that the Heavenly Father has given us through his son Yahweh Shai, which we are to utilize. That is the only weapon we are to utilize. Right, and even with that weapon, there comes a mindset. 
because all you gotta take your mind to is what um, I was gonna say the book of William Wallace, um, the movie Braveheart, <laughs> where he he said unto his uncle, "Teach me how to use a sword," and he said, "I, I, Willie." <laughs> Uh, he's, he said he will teach him, but first I, I'll, I need to teach you to use this and he'll speak it to his mind. So the the true power that we're waiting for, a spiritual power to turn into, you know, Superman, all right? Now, if you're threatened by that, that really speaks to the the fact that you believe you, you know something we don't know, all right? You, you have some records of certain things that you're aware of, which we know exists as well. All right, but the point being is that right now what we're dealing with is faith. All right, the only power we have is the use of this word as an instrument of you know attack and defense. All right, it is our defensive weapon and it is our offensive weapon by means of blocking and shield, root, keeping us rooted and grounded and shielded from any form of um, evil. But then also any evil, uh, you know, any um, attack that's made onto us, we can counter it with, you know, the cutting of this, the, the, of this, um, of the lies of, you know, any form of evil by way of the, the spiritual sword, right? Which is what, um, I'll quickly get that to prove a point and then move into my example, um. We shall jump straight to the sword. Hebrews. Oh, 4 and 12 Hebrews 4 and 12 for the word of the most high is quick and powerful and sharper than any to a sword this is our weapon of warfare all right the word of the heavenly father all right which is sharper than any to your two-edged sword so there ain't no gun out here there ain't no knife no nothing no uh, bomb, no nothing that can compare to the word of the Heavenly Father, right? This is the sharpest instrument on earth, all right? Piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit because why? It goes to your soul and spirit and the joints and the marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart, all right? So it can read your mind. So let's move into this example now. This is the book of... Um, Luke 20 I'm going to read quite a bit so I'm going to steamroll through it uh, for the in, for the in, for the interest of time Luke 20 and 9 then began he to speak to the people this parable a certain man planted a vineyard and let it forth to the husband to husbandmen and went into a far country for a long time and at the season he sent a servant to the to the husbandman that they should give him of the fruit of the vineyard. But the husbandman beat him and sent him away um, empty. And again, he sent another servant. And they beat him also and entreated him shamefully and sent him away empty. <sighs> all right. So they all, these men that let it out the vineyard from um, the... the, the, the um, the, the man that owned it, all right, they were treat, in treating his servants bad, all right, and it's going to go on to say, say why they were doing so. Verse 13, then said the Lord of the vineyard, what shall I do? I will send my beloved son. It may be they will reverence him when they see him. But when the husbandmen saw him, they reasoned among themselves, saying, this is the heir. Come, let us kill him. That the, that the inheritance may be ours. So they cast him out of the vineyard and killed him. 
what that would therefore shall the king shall the lord of the vineyard do unto them he shall come and destroy these husbandmen and shall give the vineyard to others and when they heard it they said god god forbid all right so he was speaking to those wicked scribes and pharisees saying that look the vineyard is the nation of israel and it was let out for the time when he left all right after moses it was passed down into leaders that you know passed through genealogy and are entrusted with certain key um roles over the nation all right but through process of time you had wicked individuals that sat in the seat of moses and basically didn't want to you know give up their power when it was time for them to do so in accordance to what moses said about one coming like like unto him all right so they only killed him in hopes that they'll preserve it but only it would be their judgment which they as they said god forbid they were in denial about so let's read on verse 17 and he beheld them and said what is this then that is written the stone which the builders rejected the same is become the head of the corner whosoever shall fall upon the stone shall be broken but on whomsoever it shall fall it will grind him to powder. So that's that, you know, great millstone of Yahweh Bar Shem Yon Shah Bar Shem Man, he, he is, you know, the Lord, all right? 19. And the chief priests and the scribes, the same hour, sought to lay hands on him. Right? This is getting into the point now. And they feared the people. But they perceived that he had spoken this parable against him. So they were in fear of the people because at that time they understood that look, they Yahweh Shah was the people's champ, all right, and they, they had to really respect that and really deal with it as to as far as for what it was. That if they make a move on him, it wouldn't be beneficial to them. It'll only be, you know, to their own detriment and to their own downfall. So they they had to be a bit wiser in 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 how how they went about doing what they would like to do. Verse twenty one. Um, sorry, I skipped a bit. Uh, verse twenty, and they watched him. All right. So they spied on Yahweh Shai and sent forth spies which should feign themselves just men. So they sent these wicked scribes and Pharisees sent spies among them. Now what you gotta remember as well, we have a thing in its modern eight era under the rulership of Esau known as what? The clergy response team, all right? Whereby they are gonna you know, whatever denomination they, they speak to, whatever position they hold, they're part of this, this group. And they're there for, in times of crisis, to basically lull, lull the people to sleep and make them move in line with what the, the powers that be are ordained to do. And they go to scripture, their go-to scripture is going to be what? Romans, the 13th chapter. All right, and basically say, look, you have to conform to the powers that be. They're going to butcher that scripture and, and a lot of people are going to fall for it. All right, but then ultimately those same groups are in cahoots with who? The government. All you got to do is, you know, go back to COINTELPRO. Things, you know, in the times of old, you have the uh, King Alfred. Well, I, ain't, I hope it's called the King Alfred plan. I, I can't remember. It's been so long. But I forgot all the names of these um these um organizational groups um that they formed to to oversee these individuals that basically would be at the helm in terms of doing things of this nature. So let's read it again, verse twenty. And they watched him and sent forth spies which should feign themselves just men, alright, those that are crept in unaware, alright, to look like they're just you know, upstanding individuals within the faith, that they might take hold of his words, that so they might deliver him unto the power and authority of the governor. 
So they wanted to take hold of his words, catch him in his words, to find a, a discrepancy so they could, you know, deliver him up to the Romans. Right, and this is why it's key and so, you know, imperative, so so necessary for us to stick to the scriptures. Everything we say, we got to have, you know, spring out the scripture, speak. All right, any point you move to, it's got to speak in line with the precepts of this Bible, all right, the prophecy, the testimony of Yahweh Shai, because this is the game that they're playing. They're, they're attempting to catch us in our words and only as well in our actions, all right? As you had this individual pop up and try and, you know, come across like one of us and be tied into the ministry and hope that someone will take them on and they'll join and be part of the camp. That's their game plan, all right? But that's why we got to be circumspect. And as the the elder um, Manasseh's up done, it showed, you know, a, a, um, a keen eye uh, for Yahweh Shai, when I say a keen eye for Yahweh Shai, you know, a keen eye for, you know, a uh, a wolf in sheep's clothing, all right, to point some something out and put, you know, and kill that cancer before it festers, all right, as a point to, you know, have this individual, whatever he wanted to do later on in, down the line, all right, and then tie it to uh, Great Millstone. Verse 21, and they asked him, saying, Master, we know that thou sayest and teachest rightly, neither acceptest thou the person of any, but teachest uh, the way of the Most High truly. Is it lawful for us to give tribute unto Caesar or no? All right, so this was the, this was the, uh, the trap, the snare that I was trying to lay, all right, for them, for him to blaspheme against Caesar, all right? But he perceived their craftiness and said unto them, Why tempt ye me? Show me a penny whose image and uh, superscription have it. They answered and said, Caesar's. And he said unto them, Render therefore unto Caesar the things which be Caesar's, and unto the Most High the things that be the Most High's. All right? Meaning what? That as this would be the perfect time to bring up bring up Romans thirteen, that the powers that be have control, and you you know the heavenly Father will ordain them, and you know they they don't bear that that sword in vain. You have to deal with them in accordance because we're underneath them, all right. We have to you know that's why Gamaliel spoke about Acts the fifth chapter, the different individuals that tried to rise up against the powers that be at that time and got crushed. We we're to honor them, all right. And that's what Yahweh Shai was saying. Show, pay your taxes, do everything you're meant to do, in in terms of you know within the society, but the things of the Most High you need to render unto the Most High. The spiritual gifts, that's what you need to give unto the Heavenly Father, all right. Verse twenty six, and they could not take hold of his words before the people, and they marvelled at his answer, and held their peace. Why? Because he hewed. That sword, all right, the sword of you know the the spirit of Yahweh Bar Shem Yahweh Shai Bar Shem Rokach and hewed them to pieces, cut them so they, they that they you know couldn't catch him in his words. Excuse me. So let me end on this scripture here, because this is what we're this is where we're at, man. Matthew ten and sixteen. Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. All right, that speaks to what we are about in this time, all right? It says, we are being sent in the midst of wolves, all right? Esau Edom is a wolf, all right? He has sharp teeth, sharp claws, um, a, 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 scent, a scent for blood, all right? A bloodlust, a pack, everything to, to the ability as to where if a sheep is, you know, wandering astray, that them pack of wolves are going to have their way. All right, but now, if the sheep is within the congregation of Yahweh Shai, there's guard dogs there. Is you know there's Yahweh Shai when we need there, um, through the spirit, with his shillelagh, all right, with his rod, his staff to 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 protect the the fold and to keep you within the fold and to keep those wolves without. 
But being a sheep is that is just that being a sheep. All right. You're basically, you know, going about barring here and there. And you're just your your power is in the those that guard the fold. All right. So let me read again. Verse 16. Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. All right. So all you have is wisdom. It's funny. I was listening. I was listening to a podcast earlier today and the guy was saying too many people I forgot what animal he compared it to I'll go with bear I think he said something uh, one of the, the predators in the field but he said too many people when they're out in the wilderness they feel like bears in in the wilderness no you need to think like a cockroach a cockroach is just is on edge and trying to survive it's <laughs> And it's a good point because basically if you're in a situation where you know you're a sheep and you have no power, your only power is wisdom. All it is is that you know, okay, look, if I go down that dark alley and I you know, and I'm wearing a this or I'm doing I've I've started thinking about women, but let me not go delve down that pathway. But you just know there's certain uh like going to a nightclub and hanging around after the night's done when you got, you know, tension in the air, that's a, a big no-no because what's going to, what what are you only um, walking into? You're, all, you're ultimately setting yourself up for catching a stray bullet or something of that nature, right? That's why it says, be therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves, all right? Because a dove is harmless, just as a sheep is harmless. But the wisdom we use, we need to impart is that of a serpent. We need to think, all right, as our Lord would think, all right, in these situations that arise and be very witty and and, and always be mindful of everything. Verse 17, but, be, 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 uh, but beware of men, for they will deliver you up to the councils and they will scourge you in their synagogues, all right? Because that's what's going on. So we have to beware of men. Because why? They're attempting to catch us out. All right. To for their own agenda. For their own, you know, um, what's the word I want to use? For their own benefit. All right. Whatever they want to do. All right. Only turning the the truth of Yahweh Barsham Yahweh Shai Barsham Harakakadash into a lie. That's their agenda. Verse eighteen. And ye shall be brought before governors and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them and the Gentiles. Just that's what, and we just got to think of our Lord. All right. We are the mouthpiece of Yahweh Barsham, Yahweh Barsham, We are, we have the words of the Heavenly Father upon the earth. We, you know, like it said, like the wicked scribes and Pharisees said, they said, look, when, when the, when the disciples of the Lord started saying Hosanna, Hosanna, highest, yeah, um, they they were, they got it rubbed them the wrong way, all right. So much so they said, "Tell your disciples to be quiet." But what did the Lord say? The Lord said, "If I I can't, because if they hold their peace, even though I'm Lucy paraphrasing, the stones will cry out in praise." All right, so showing you that, look, it's the Heavenly Father's words that are being spoken. There's a spirit upon us, all right, to speak these words. So ultimately, when we get brought up into these things, you may say, I want to run away, I want to do this, I'm going to do this. But whatever unfolds is according to the will of the Heavenly Father, all right? Some men need to get caught up for the sake of what being brought before certain individuals, high-ranking individuals that are behind closed doors that we do not know about or we do know about and to come before them face to face and for the heavenly father to put a heavy spirit on you and curse them out hew them into pieces with his spirit all right verse 19 but when they deliver you up take no thought how or what ye shall speak for it shall be given you in the same hour what ye shall speak the lord will put his spirit on you for it is not ye that speak, but the spirit of your father should be given you. All right? So, but the main thing is to be circumspect. You know, what's going on right now? So with that, I pray you're edified to the next one. Say shalom, shalom.